Welcome everybody yeah. back to Boost in Motion, guys. And today we're going to start off this series. So for 2022, I want to start off Bring the Boost series. In, in this case, it's going to be Bring the Boost and I'm bringing Double R up to the stage. So guys, before I jump in the video, I always got to ask you guys, I'm doing something different. Please, guys, continue to support your boy Boost. Also, I'm going to drop the link to our guest, Double R. It will be in the links below. So I'm bringing him to the stage. He's another fellow Infinity Nissan enthusiast. So we got to show him love. Much love, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you Thank coming you, to the brother. channel. Thank you. I appreciate you very much. What a nice intro for me, too. I appreciate that. Start of the show. Start of the yeah. series 2022. How yes. You, yes. We're starting something That's different. Awesome. So let's throw it right into that. Let's get right into the guts and meat of it. Brother, what can you provide to the community? Because at the end of the day, I don't know if you want to start off with the car, cars you've owned and own and the experience you have or the product and services you can offer. Whatever you want to start with, we'll just build it as we fly it, man. Well, like, th that's something that I really had to think about, especially starting off in YouTube. And uh, to be honest, like, I really knew nothing about cars when I started YouTube. And uh, it, like... Like you said, man, what am I saying? Build it as you fly it. That's literally what I did. Like you, if you look in my Inst or my YouTube bio, it says that you were watching the start of my automotive experience. That was it. That was the start of my automotive experience. You guys watched me pull out my first engine, put it, do my first force induction, do my first build, like first everything. And it's nice when I see people, well, it's funny. When I see people comment and say, like, all the time, you know, oh, how do you do this? Or uh, do I have to take it to the shop? I've never really worked on cars before. I don't want to mess everything up. And I'm like, you know what? I was there, too. And you just mm -hmm. you just got to do it. I'm sure you were in the same position. Same like, you work on your cars. Way. It's not it's not rocket science. But once you figure it out and what goes where, mm -hmm. it all makes sense. And it all comes together. And uh, I just want to show people that, like, no, you know, not to get all philosophical, but you can do whatever you want. You could build whatever you want. It's, you know, like it, a supercharged exactly. cube, like makes no sense. It might not be the fastest thing in the world and mm -hmm. whatever. It's like, it's a three, seven, like it's, but it's so cool, man. It's fun. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's different. It's what I got to learn on. And then it's just opened so many doors to people so, I've met. And So let me interject. So was the Q50 your first actual car build ever? It was. Yeah, it was. My first actual car. It was my first car. Oh, really? Even better. Yeah, you did I a had, lot better than me. I got that car <laughs> at, like, when I turned 19. Like, Dang. Uh, I had the opportunity to get my dad's Maxima when oh, I was yes. like, really young. And I held off on that and I actually ended up selling it because, yeah, I actually really wanted to drive it bad, but it just came to a point to where I was working a little bit more at the time. And yeah. I was, uh, I was doing some different things with like business and family. And mm -hmm. then, uh, it got to a point to where like, I really wanted to build a car mm -hmm. and, uh, I was thinking of either a G37, mm -hmm. 350Z, but like, what made you that? Get into a Q50 though. Like, well, like that's the thing. Like, I didn't want to be like the different guy, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I because you know, I still didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want to get into a platform that I didn't know just because I wanted to be different. Mm -hmm. But I always saw the cues, and when I say I knew nothing about cars at the time, I didn't even know cues came with a 3.7. <laughs> I didn't know at all. I thought they were all 3.0s because at the time I think it was like 18, 19, and so it's 2018, 20, I'm 21 years old. So yeah. I, I go with I go with the years. And uh it, so it's like 2018, 2019. All I'm seeing is 3.0 T's. And one day, like I go to the Infinity dealership and uh the sales rep, he I didn't get it from this dealership, but he's kind of what put me on. Like in yeah. eight months later, I ended up getting the Q and he had the exhaust and everything, and the 3.7, and he also he had a modified Q50. Yeah, he had a modified 3.7, and I was like, wow, this is great. This is different. This is cool. He told me yeah. he did it himself, and I was like, I was like, this is something I want to do. Like, yeah. I, I didn't really have much I was doing. Like, I was learning a lot about, like, business and real estate and stuff at the time because I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. as far as like hobbies and stuff like throughout high school in my younger years i almost felt like i didn't have time for it because like you know you're rushed to like agree do something after right yes. but i found cars man and i was like wow like i thought i couldn't do this i thought everything mm. was too complicated or i had to learn this or i needed a certification you don't no, man, you no, just put your no. hands on it. No, it's exactly. one of those things that like I take with me through life that like you just never leave your hands on it and you got to learn it. And experience is such like a key to getting knowledge. And yes, it's the same thing with cars, man. You got to put your hands on it. That's the only way that you're going to be able to learn. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in a sense, why I started like wanting to make more YouTube channels is because I noticed that people really wanted to build their cars, but like mm -hmm. either couldn't or didn't know how to. And mm -hmm. like now each day, I'm just trying to figure out different ways to where like I can either help people out with like mm -hmm. either commenting or builds or putting out videos or just mm -hmm. showing them that like you can do what you want, man. It doesn't matter. I like I'm a kid who makes YouTube videos and puts them out there. And like, I'm able to go ahead and gravitate to all these people and just talk to them. And like, I would have never been able to do that if I just didn't record what I was going to end up doing most likely in the first place. Agreed. What so I more also... than like mm -hmm. building cars, it's like document what you do, make something out of what you do and like do what And people will learn it. from it. Mm -hmm. What I was also, what I also learned when I was a kid, was I used to take uh, little cars apart, little electronic cars, right? And oh yeah, um, it's just you want to know how the thing works. And what I realized as I got older is there's a tool for everything, right? As long as you got the tools, you can get the job done. And that's what I try yeah. my best to portray on my channel. And I realize you do the same exact thing. So that's why I'm like, me and this guy, we'll link up, we'll talk. We definitely see eye to eye, and this is great. So to move forward with the conversation, once you got the Q50, because you, this guy inspired you. Did you even have a that, plan you know, on? Can you did you even, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you, did you even have a plan on what you wanted to do with the? <laughs> That's the funny thing. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> like zero plan. Like I didn't know if I didn't know what size wheels were. What I didn't even know what brand wheels were. Like. I didn't fit into any group. I just knew that I wanted the, for one, the three seven platform at the time, three seventy Z's were like 30 grand and 3.0 T's I saw, but at the time, 2018, there was nothing. There was nothing for them. Like, you, like yeah. what could you really do with a 3.0 T in other what, than JV4. four or five years ago? Yeah, other than JV4, JV4. and like begging AMS to give you, you a do tune, something. you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I thought the 3.7 was perfect because everything kind of fit. You had a good yeah. aftermarket community for it. And like, it looked different. Like the thing with the G37 is like, not that the G37 has a stigma or anything. I love G37s, but the but Q50 they've been out forever. Like, yeah. You know, they're a 12 year old <laughs> car. Like yeah. and not that the car is 12 years old, but the model, like, you know, it's yeah. grown over time, but yeah. Like, same reason why you got a Q50 from a, yeah. like, a G3. It, it's just, it's, it's different. It's old. You, know? you got to move it's forward. A, it's a it. nice styled car. Finally, infinity, like nailed it with something that a lot of people could look at and mm. appreciate like this is this is nice you know it's not overly aggressive it just the the curves they just it complements it, looks, it it looks so good I, just on a style wise they you know yeah. like they did since 2014 you know, they, could, they could keep this one for another like 12 years from when they started too like it's a really nice design it's and then the fact nice. that they put like a 3.7 something that i knew that i can work on it is a user friendly engine and that's what mm -hmm. i love about it like a lot of the newer cars like it, it's more you don't moving need special tool yeah well you don't even need special tools like i know a lot of bmws you need a vacuum pump just to change the oil you need a lot right? of stuff like that yeah, yeah. You need a lot of, yeah so just to be able to like work on my car and figure out what i like and what wheels and what color and whatever and then i started mm -hmm. noticing like it wasn't even just a car, you know, it was one of the first things that I've like ever had to call mine. You know, yeah. I didn't have a house at the time. I didn't have like, I didn't even have a girlfriend. Like I didn't, 
I didn't really have anything, you know. I like I had my room, my bed, yeah. like that wasn't even really yeah. mine, you know. Those are like hand me downs for families and stuff. Like, yeah. So <laughs> when I got my cue, it was like, wow, this is this is mine. Like I wanted it, I worked hard for it. And you know, now I get to and do whatever I want with it. I get to put my hands on it, and no one can tell me nothing. Exactly. So, so now you're like, all right, cool. Let me get into modifying. Now tell me, yeah. how did you end up supercharged? Did you just start going full bolt on tune first, or you uh, supercharger fell on your lap? I'm very confused. So it's it's like even longer than like what did I even want to do with my car? Like so, how I learned how to work on cars like wasn't just me putting my hands on the cue, even though like that did have a big factor. Mm -hmm. Um. I was originally looking for a shop to get my cube worked on okay. because I already had rims that I wanted. I was like on twenties or some shit. So obviously I didn't like know about Nintendo. modifying or anything. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, I went and got an exhaust. Um, I got a motor dyne, uh, no, not a motor dyne, the stilling, uh, axle back. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I got that one too. Cat bag. I got an axle yeah. back. Like, <laughs> yeah, I still I got the OEM cats and everything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went to the shop. Oh, I didn't even mean to go to the shop. I'm driving down the street, and then I look to my left, and there's this gray building that I knew ever since I was a kid. I've been in Florida since I was, like, three years old. I, mm -hmm. I was born in Chicago. Okay. So my whole family is over there. So it's just, like, it was just me and my mom over here. So, I mean, we lived in the small town of Pinellas. So th I knew, like, where everything was. And I passed this building, and I look, and there's a Q50 on a lift. And I'm like, that's, that's where I need to go. And I pull in and like, little do I know it's a Nissan Infinity performance shop that like just opened up, not even like four or five months ago. Like, so I'm over there talking to him and like trying to tell him that I'm looking for experience. Like I do want to work on my car and mm -hmm. these are things that I want to do. And he was like, oh, you got to turbo it. You got to turbo it. You got to turbo it. And I was like, oh, okay, well that's when I started looking into kits and whatever. So mm -hmm. I started hanging out there every single day. Cause mm -hmm. like, like I said, like that, that, yeah. that was the, my first like in to in, cars. Yes. Car yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I didn't go to any meets. I didn't know anyone on Facebook, Instagram, nothing. Like the only person who honestly got me into cars besides myself was my dad. Cause mm -hmm. he was into that. Um, I, just to bring it up, like my dad passed away like around when I was like 14, 15. So oh, cars, yeah, like, that. became like a big thing around after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just started hanging out. It came to a point to where they started just fondling with my car, looking at stuff, seeing that everything was the same from a 370 and from yeah. a 237. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just got to a point to where like, I started just putting my hands on cars with them, helping them out. And mm -hmm. uh, we just ended up coming to agreement after hanging out for so long and them realizing that, you know, I was cool. I wasn't trying to use them for content or anything. Yeah. You know, I think I recorded like one or two videos there and I had them help me and it helped them too. They got a few clients from it, but we made this agreement to where I can work on my car there for free. Cause that's what I was looking for experience. Yeah. If I work with them, they worked with them, yeah, and a barter, a barter system. I was eighteen, nineteen, no certification, just out of high school, and like didn't know a damn thing about cars. So instantly, like, became a loop tech, and I'm taking off bumpers, and I'm taking <laughs> off like body kits and people's crash stuff, and putting on tires and all this shit. And oh yeah, it came to a point after I did that for about four or five months with like barely getting paid anything oh because man. i was just well i didn't even care because i was just you so were like an apprentice like, i was I yeah i was working i that was my school that's and like i was doing other stuff like uh me and my family owned a gas station at the time okay so we were doing stuff with that um so i was able to like spend like a lot of my free time because i wasn't really doing much else at the shop and I was just working on Nissan's Infinity Zs all so, day, and like sounds like you were an intern. Charging. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I was like an intern. Okay. And then um, it got to a point to where like I started noticing a lot of people had like a lot of turbo kits and stuff, and. 
they were cool, but like they're all balls to the wall and crazy and all this stuff. And I loved it. But like, I saw this just really like just clean 370 with a supercharger, dude. Mm-hmm. And I got to work on it and I just saw how user friendly it, it was. Everything it's all right just on. It's yeah. pulleys and belts and intake just goes here and you, that's it. Like the hardest part is the intake manifold bolts. Like that's it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard about that. They're terrible. <laughs> um, but other than that, like they're, it's such a simple way. And like I learned forced induction through this simple way yeah. because honestly, like the plumbing and stuff and turbos was a little too complicated for it's, me. Yeah. And the supercharger was easy. So I was like, oh, this is. You don't have to drop the motor. Great. You don't have to yeah, drop the now, front end. <laughs> now, it was all this stuff with like the water to air kit that I started learning and all this like stuff that I learned about the air to air kit being more efficient because mm-hmm. obviously the water gets hot and then it's not doing anything. And the water reservoir can only be so big and it takes mm-hmm. space. It doesn't look good. There's all these factors, whatever. Air to air is very simple. And I, it, like I heard, all you had to do was clock the supercharger a certain way, and then you could go ahead and just run the air to air. And I was like, well, "Oh wow, I'm finally doing research." On let my me step car. back. Let me step back here before we get into that. So <laughs> yeah. we gotta step back, you know, because I know the viewers are watching. Not now, but you know, they're watching on the yeah, replay. Yeah, of course. So you got the car. You're learning that they have a supercharger. You don't want to go turbo. You really liked how the 370 looked with the supercharger kit. So I guess you started going hunting for the supercharger kit at this point. Yeah. So I started going hunting for the kit because I just, I saw how easy it was to work on. I saw that this was a thing like, so the owner of the shop, his name was Chad. And he said, uh, if you want to do anything with your car, like, you know, not saying that we're not going to work on your car, but you got to know how to work on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're not always going to be here for you. If you break down on the side of the road, if it's in your driveway and you can't get it here, you got to know how to work on your car. And if you're not willing to do that, then you shouldn't be building that. You should just leave it how it is. I love that. And right there, I was like, not that I felt tested in a way, but I was like, I I saw a challenge right there. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people say, you know, cars are a money pit and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, man, if, if it's a challenge, if it's something you want to do with your hands, you want to put your effort into it and create something, man, mm-hmm. it's, it's provided me like that car alone has like done so much more, like in the people I've met and the experiences I've had, like mm-hmm. I've been able to make money through YouTube. Like that's, yeah. that's great. I never thought I could do that with a car. A car. You know? exactly. and, like, and like for a relatively like really small channel, the fact that I feel like so impacted and like mm. I, I mean, to impact over two, three, I think I'm at like almost four thousand subscribers or something. Yeah, to impact that many people. That's mm. insane. It is. That's insane. And uh, it's just it's nice to like feel like you're a part of the community because you know like it. it, it not that, you're part like, of the network, man. But yeah, you're it's part of the network. network. It's nice to make connections and stuff. So yeah, I I started hunting for the kit and just. I realized that it was user friendly and that I could work on this thing. I understand how it works. I know what to look for. Mm-hmm. And at the time it was really cool. Cause I found one of the first like people I looked up to as far mm-hmm. as like builds. And it was Eric Flores. Okay. Uh, that, yep. And I saw like the trials and tribulations he went through and like how that would probably turn off a lot of people. I was like, Oh, this is like what I, this is what I want. Like this person already went through it all through it. and everything. Mm-hmm. I could ask him so many questions and that's exactly what I did. Automatically off the bat, he told me air to air kit. It's way more efficient. Yeah, um, and he told me about the, uh, the belt slip that I could be. Occurring. Everybody and deals I, with that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like in this, I found this dude in Taiwan who's helping me out. We'll go ahead and talk about that later, but yeah. So I, I found this like community of people who are trying to perfect this kit. And I was like, oh, this mm-hmm. is a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Like this is this is cool. So yeah, I felt like I could put my work and my effort in and, and not only give value to these people, but just the people in general who want something to like work on and you know look forward to building. So where'd you get your kit from Taiwan? 
No, so I didn't get okay. my kit from Taiwan. I got my anti-slip kit from Taiwan. Okay. So I have no more belt slip. I'm at 12 and a half PSI with no belt slip. Um, but that's all because of this anti-slip kit, which is like a reinforced pulley. I'll, I'll send you a picture of it, but it's like this reinforced pulley bracket that's on the top of the supercharger belt. Okay. So not that the Stillen kit is flawed in any sort of way, but... I think because the V3 trim supercharger blower is one of their lower end blowers, they didn't really put too much time and effort into the R and D into the kit. Hence why it's like a water to air kit. They didn't. Spend yeah. Much time they just threw it on there for. Yeah, exactly. And then you got people like Soho Motorsports who realizes that this kit has potential and that superchargers are like, so the thing with VQs is they love boost, but they hate torque, you know, like oh, that's the trans Oh yeah. <laughs> well the trans. Yeah. But the thing with the supercharger is it, people are ramping it up all the way to 600 something, 650 horsepower, and their torque is at like 450, 480. It's like mm -hmm. it's healthy. So you got this really linear power that doesn't, mm -hmm. it just feels like a freight train and it's really healthy on the motor. So, so when you add things like an air to air and stuff, making it really efficient, like it really interests you to see where the. So let's step back a little bit, right? Because I want people that are watching to understand. So you said that you got the V3 trim. Can you break down the different trim superchargers that you can yeah, so adapt to the plate? There's a there's a couple of different. There's like the SC. Like there's the, I think the older trim is called the SCI. The new trim is called the SI blower. They just um, the, it, the, the SI blower is a little more efficient. Uh, it has to do with like the bearings inside. Um, but the, uh, Vortex just offers so many different trims of superchargers for like Corvettes and Mustangs. Like they have the H trim that I'm sure you saw on Eric's. Yes. Um, but, but the thing is, is like, so, you know, like you could just slap a different turbo on and like, you know, depending on the compression ratio is yeah. where your car is going to be the most efficient. It's the same thing with these supercharger blowers. If you throw too big of a supercharger blower on here, thinking that, you know, you're just going to make all the power by spinning the damn thing. A lot of these VQs, like, not built, like, for example, mine, mine's a stock VQ. I can't spin those blowers at the idle boost that they're supposed to spin at. It won't. It's, like, too big of a blower. Also, it's too much if, parasitic drain, you would say. Yeah, exactly. Also, if you end up um, if you end up creating that amount of boost with the blower, the, like, the size of the blower ends up, uh, again, like, the the torsion, the lateral torsion of like all that weight and boost and like it ends up bending the bracket. So like my oh. supercharger, yeah. So it's too heavy. It's just too big. Like they're meant for big V8s and Corvettes and stuff. And uh, you just you can either build your VQ to get to accommodate those kind of blowers. But what I find perfect is the, the V3 blower that they offer. I mean, 16 pounds of boost. What more could you really ask for? 650 horsepower out of your VQ. Yeah. And then if you Still really did, too. yeah, if you did want more than that, then yeah, you get a bigger blower and you build your motor, you know, at that point. Yeah. So mm. you, you can't really have one without the other. That's why I feel like the, the V3 SI trim is what it's called. That's the newer version. The mm -hmm. older you could get the SCI trim. It just has to do with the bearings. Like it's a little louder too. Um, but I, I notice a lot of people, they don't want to risk taking out their motor. They don't want to risk breaking anything. You know, there's very yeah. few people who are willing to take that risk like Eric, you know, mm -hmm. throwing on different blowers and trying all these experimental things. I mean, even me just trying to, to boost the VQ. So it, I noticed like as user friendly as it could be to mm -hmm. where you don't have to build the car. Like it just, it makes it for a really nice kit. That's what I love about 3.0 T's by the way. Let's just okay. Like, okay. Yeah. We about, could, yeah, yeah. I know we're, we're ahead, talking about my kit kit real quick, but what I love about 3.0 T's, which a lot of people like think that I have this stigma against the, not at all. I think they're amazing motors. I just, I like, I already have a Q50. What the fuck? Like, what do yeah. I do? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like. So you don't have to touch the damn thing. You yes. can go and get it. Yeah, you don't have to it's touch it. It's already done from it's factory. It's ready. It's already twin turbo. Like, if you want, like, there's no reason to upgrade it. I mean, this uh, people are running 10 second, 11 flat quarter miles on stock turbos. turbos. Like, 
Yeah. All day. Every what day. What do you do? You add efficiency parts, and those are fun, you know? Yes, it makes sense. An expansion system, a blow-off valve. Uh, now they have an air-to-air intercooler, which oh, like, yes. we'll get into that. That's insane, by the way. It looks great. But – that's user friendly. Like that's the yeah. utmost user friendly. You know, yeah. like you don't have to touch anything. And like mm. it was a like a little too user friendly for like I was even thinking about building it at the time, but mm. like now in retrospect, like I'm kind of glad I went 3.7 because I was I learned more about like cars, cars. on it. But 3.0 T's like even if you don't want the if you don't want the greasy hands and all this stuff and you don't want like all these extra parts mm-hmm. and all these extra excess piping and you can just go 3.0 T do your tune, do your yeah. exhaust down system, pipes. Your lower and down it. pipes and just day. kind of call it a day. Yeah. It's easy. I don't know how, I know they don't like E85 too much. Do they, or do they do? Um, right? We still don't know exactly, but you can <laughs> the high pressure. When you add the high pressure fuel pump, it's pretty consistent that the injectors will stick. It's either a failure of the injector or corrosion of the fuel rail. We still don't know. We still but don't 93 know. 93 all day, right? All three all day. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay, 420, so yeah, 450 easy, wheel, call a day. Very easy stuff, you know? Like, you don't even have to upgrade you. I mean, you couldn't ask for, like, a better car to come out of Nissan for just people who want to work on their cars without the risk taking of exactly ruining something you know you can't tune your car yourself so you're forced to go to someone with it and what are you gonna what are you gonna do drop and crack your exhaust like <laughs> you know as long as you like That's just bolt it in there correctly like then you're fine That's it. you're, you're good still to working go. on your car and the difference the result that you feel is great the it's amount of torque thing. that those cars make so but there's really nothing do, like, like a vq with those. boost though the beat yeah. is on displacement all day every day so Man. It's my a question. wild, it's a wild, right? It's so a free it, train. <laughs> is your Q50 uh, tuned on 93 or 85 or is it return to the system or no? Yeah, so it's been, uh, I do have a, you said return system? Yeah, return system, yeah. Yeah, I do have a CJM return system back to the back to the tank and then uh, I run an E85 for, so I have, um, so just to get into this too, not to rant, but a lot of people get confused with like E85 and 93 and thinking that if you have to choose between the two, you have to be full 100% in like either one. And that's not true. You could obviously get um, uh, an, uh, what? flex fuel. Um, yeah, flex fuel kit. I'm sorry. I just lost yeah. it. So yeah, you could get a flex fuel regulator and then you'll be able to just mix your fuels if you want more E85, just pre-prep for that. You know, the day before, fill your car up when it's empty. Just try to get most of the 93 out the system. But, like, I've been running E85 for over a year. I have a flex fuel kit, and it, I just have one that's 10 minutes down the street. So, E85 is cheaper than 93. Yes, like, usually. Uh, up here, I, it's about the same price. Yeah, I drive my truck a lot. You know, I have a diesel truck, and that doesn't really, like, chug gas too much. It has a huge-ass tank, so I'm barely filling it up. So, like, <laughs> E85 just makes sense for me because it's it With keeps everything clean. Yeah, and, like, I don't fill it up too much. So, like, I'm not worried about the fuel getting old and stuff. And it just – it's cheap, and it just it smells good, you know, and I'm just – I'm not worried about it. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. My car is a lot happier on E85. I've noticed that. Mm-hmm. My next question is for the people who's watching, um, why should people have a uh, return system? So, like, a lot of, especially on boosted cars, like, it's not necessary, right? So you can go ahead and run the uh, fuel return, si- or the, just a stock OEM fuel rail uh, without a return system on a boosted car. It's just, mm-hmm. especially on, like, E85, like one, I'd re- recommend like sw- swapping out the fuel lines because obviously OEM fuel lines aren't good for E. But um, it's like it's also like excess pressure or excess fuel that uh, whenever you let off the throttle, it like backs up into the fuel injectors and like clogs the whole entire fuel pressure system. And it's just it's not it doesn't make for very consistent AFRs and mm. it's it's the most like I'm all about efficiency. You know, mm-hmm. so like having the like you don't have to go as far as like getting the CGM fuel rails and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you could do this all on an OEM like fuel 
rail and stuff yeah. just getting the oem lines or getting rid of the oem lines getting like micro glass braided ones getting the return line back so that way you can kind of complete the system yeah close because i think yeah even uh hellcats they have no return i'm not too positive systems, OEM. i'm not too i thought positive. they did i thought um but yeah there's a there's a couple of factory cars that come with a return system but it's just it's a lot more uh it's a lot more efficient. Like having it, it just makes sense too. Like having a full closed system back to the fuel tank, especially when you're running that much fuel through your Man, just fuel makes, pressure. Yeah, it just makes more sense. Like it and having the fuel pressure regulator too is huge. Like just dialing your car in, having consistent AFRs. Cause like so people build these cars and they want to try and make like the most power that they can and not realizing that you want to make the most power, obviously, but for the longest time possible. Right. Uh -huh. So not like, to, like, I know a lot of people like, uh, throw a lot of force, like force induction or like boosted applications on their car and either not tuning them or not putting in like right injectors, it's just not doing the research, you know, that's the and fact. they wonder why they're, car is not like i always say happy because it just it sounds you like want, a car is mad or it sounds like a car is happy do you want to yeah, run properly and start every day efficiently you know so like the same thing with uh like the the water to air kit changing it to an air to air kit this is the same reason why you upgrade your fuel pump because like mm -hmm. you're gonna burn your fuel pump trying to run that it can't even pump that much yes you go ahead. gotta upgrade it yeah, you got to do that and like get, getting different lines. Like, sure, you could run to OEM fuel lines until they evap the fucking, you get holes <laughs> and like, it just break But you have to upgrade the car. Out. So, yeah, and the same thing with fuel injectors. Like, you expect to like your OEM You're going to max injectors. out your fuel injectors. Like, you got to go yeah, up. So, so there's that, that kind of gets us to, I'm sorry for cutting you off. That kind of gets us to this simple question. I got a 2014 3.7. Of course, it's auto. And I want to make 500 wheel horsepower on 93. What would you be the checklist you would give for um, the viewers? 500 would have wheel been seven? On 93. NA? NA, yeah. 500 wheel, 93, of course. I mean, I, I mean NA, but of course with a supercharger, of course. Yeah, I, okay. I was going to say. I so break know. it down. I'm sorry. Yeah, break it you down. Can maybe, you can maybe, like, on a on a dyno with like a light roller you could probably hit like uh you could touch 400 horsepower na obviously we all know like unless you're running like force induction or some sort of nitrous like but i want 500 you, wheel on supercharge want, what would be the checklist on supercharge or on a supercharger on a supercharger what would be the checklist oh, i'm sorry for my it's asking very question. simple no 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 all you're right. good Go ahead. it's Go very ahead. simple it just, so you could even just run the Stillen kit as is, but I always say run top guns because one, it's like eight hundred to a thousand dollars cheaper than the Stillen kit. I don't know if okay. you looked at the top guns kit. Yes, I it, have. Uh, it's it's beautiful. It comes with the air to air kit. It comes with everything clocked the way it's supposed to be, couplers and everything you need, and it deletes the water to air kit for you. Uh, hmm. it, you don't have to worry about uh, like Uprev is good, but Ecutech you know is way better, way more configurable. Mm -hmm. um they and the on the stillman website they don't tell you anything like they don't tell you what fuel injectors to get they don't nothing they don't tell you what fuel rails to get they don't tell you you they need an upgraded fuel pump nothing they're just like here's the kit put it on break your car you know so what's nice about top guns is they have all this stuff on their site it's like this like people ask for my mod list i go ahead and send them the top guns link and i'm like you want a supercharged kit here you go like Get everything that it says here. So it has you would say a map I'm sorry. sensor, so you're not using like. Go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, it was saying. So it would. So what you're saying is checklist is you would recommend Top Guns. Second, 100%. Sec, second air to air. Um, third, yeah, of course, it, the map just sensor. because. I know that if you're getting a supercharger, it's not because you're trying to go to work. It's because you're trying to race, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be fast. So. Yeah, exactly. So if you're trying to be faster, you don't want to just do that once in a while. Like you're trying to do that consistently. You want the car to be efficient, consistent. And mm -hmm. like with, with the water to air kit, especially where I live in Florida, like just the car sitting, it's hot. Yes. Like why would I want boiling water running through my intake manifold? Exactly. It just makes no sense. 
a lot of cars they're built and meant for it. Like they, you know, some people throw on chiller killers and all this stuff, but why, when you can go ahead and like Just go ahead, yeah. the Soho kit is really expensive if you want a really nice kit you can go ahead and do that but with some intercooler piping and if you just pick up a uh, an intercooler that fits you can make yeah. your own yeah it's a lot simple. cheaper even yeah, though shout, to, shout to soho shout, shout to out soho, to soho though they make just, a beautiful kit it's, it's laying some power ouch. yeah it's <laughs> all nice. right but so yeah, what, so if you so did you did you have to um on 93 do you have to upgrade your fuel system for 93 fuel on 93, I did not have to upgrade uh, the fuel system as far as like the lines and the fuel rails. Like, uh, okay. I mean, 93 the VQs are very happy on too. I'm not bashing 93. I just yeah. run E85 because it's more efficient for me. Yeah. But uh, if you are going to touch the fuel system at all, like, dude, a fuel pump is $100. Like, before you do anything, I'd say go and get yourself a fuel pump because, like, you don't need a tune, you don't need nothing, and it's more efficient. Like, okay. get yourself a fuel pump. So and upgrade a fuel pump on 93. 100%. I, I'd okay. say like a, a Walboro 450. Okay. Right? That's, that's pretty common. That's yeah, that's common. It's $118. Like, you know, okay. and uh, th What's... this part's a little more expensive, but fuel injectors, 100%, yes. man. What size fuel injectors? Um, If you're trying to run 500, I always say go 1050s. You don't need more uh then like 1050s will get you all the way to like 600 horsepower if you want like to save a little money uh, i mean 1050s is what uh top guns recommends as That's well. pretty common but uh also uh what's the lower ones um i'm not too positive but if you're saying 1050s, it's better to overkill on fuel anyway well 100 percent. yeah well i mean i know a lot of people go 12s um, or like the, I, a lot of people use the GTR injectors, right? So the GTR those are like 550 though, like those are like, yeah. So a lot of people use that and they get away with it. That's the one I was thinking of. Nah, they so must be maxing those use, things out. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. So getting those 10, to, even though like they're expensive kit, I think they'll each injector is almost like $80 to a hundred dollars. You can get right? it cheaper than that. I've seen them for cheaper on like on eBay. There's people who make replicas of it. So yeah. Man, send me the link. But you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. No, get, get yourself. If you're doing a new build, listen, that's just me, man. Cause that's me. But yeah, if you're doing a new build, you're new to this, get yourself just new stuff, man. Like, don't deal with, like, Facebook Marketplace stuff, man, unless you know how to work on cars. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if you know what to look for, go ahead. But I know a lot of people who hit me up for use kits, and, like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even sell someone my kit. My kit's built nice, but, like, man, like, so you don't want these problems. So what you would say is, all right, cool. We already got the Top Guns kit. We got the yeah, fuel, pump. fuel pump. We got, fuel we injectors. got the injectors. Okay. And you recommend 100%. the Ecutex. Find a tuner that can use Ecutex over, over upred. 100%. Ecutex has an app. Number one, that should be the seller for you. You cannot look at upred. Mm -hmm. You can't. There's nothing you can do. You, is, you get the tune and you call it a day. You don't even know if like they tuned your car. With upright, you can see your ignition timing. You can see your AFR. Yeah, Acutech, you, you, can you can see, see up, up, you can, Acutech, you can see it, not upright. You sound like you confused me there. Oh, yeah, no, no, no okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Acutech, you can see it. Upright, you can't see it. So, mm -hmm. Acutech, yeah, like you can see if you, you can yell out your tuner through Acutech because something's not running right. And you can see, you get all your configurations through Acutech. And what's cool, man, about tuners now is like remote tuning. Like a lot of people are saying, look for tuners in the area or whatever. No, man, you can no, remote tunes. The car. Remote right, tunes remote are great. Tune. And that's what I love about JV4 is like JV4. Now you don't even have to like, what this is 3.0 yeah. T's. This is not 3.0 Okay, we could jump on 3.0 T now. Go ahead. Yeah, well, just real <laughs> quick, like JV4, just because we're talking about tuning, what I love about JV4 is like, it's one of the first things that I've seen to where now you give the power to the people. Yes. Now you don't have to realize or realize you don't have to rely on the tuner. Not saying that tuners are unreliable. No, yes. you're busy. Yes. You ever try and schedule a tuner? You oh, won't man. see it for another three weeks. Guaranteed. Yes. Yes. It's just how it happens. So if you want something now and you want to be able to dial it yourself and you want to just get the hang of everything, like yeah. again, another user-friendly thing. Like People get scared when they talk about tunes, but when you just mentioned JV4, hey, plug this in, it makes your car faster. It's like, oh, 
Mm -hmm. cool. And you great. get to learn a lot. Um, yes. the just to jump in, the JB4 Boost Controller, because that's all it really is anyone who's watching. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just there, but you get to learn to look at specific parameters of the car, and you get yeah. more used to it. So when you do yeah. get into you tune, learn the vocab. And then you see that there's knock and the tuner's you're like the car's not running right. And you see that it's not running right. And the mm -hmm. tuner's like, oh, how do you mm -hmm. know that? Because I'm very familiar yeah. with looking at the data loads yeah. already. So that's great. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's stuff like that, man. Just I'm not calling people lazy or anything, you know, but like you just <laughs> people you gotta lazy, give, man. You gotta give people a bone. When they wanna learn something, make it like easy for them to grab onto and learn and then they'll naturally want to start getting the complicated stuff is just research mm -hmm. that's all it is it's the time that you take to read you know and a lot of people don't want to spend their time on other things that they might not be interested in but if you get them interested through saying like hey this is actually simple you just mm -hmm. got to spend some time on it let me try and make it as simple as possible for you mm -hmm. and jb2 and eq uh, jb4 and eq tech do that they do that very well. It, it's fun. You get to set up your own little screen and everything. Yeah. You get your own pages, however you mm -hmm. want. It's fun. And then they, they're just tricking you. Like, hey, you're learning about your car. Like, as you're doing this. Okay. So 100%, if you're trying to go tune, EcuTech, if you're trying to reach that 500 horsepower, it, EcuTech will take you a, anywhere you want. 500 right. to 1,000. So, so before we end up with the Q50 talk, let's – Let's jump off. Let's jump to the 600 wheel now. 600 wheel for the VQ on a supercharger. So, what will be the additional things you would need? So, this is where you start looking into not even how much power you can pull out of your car. It's how, like, again, efficiency. Like, efficiency is key. So, getting that oil cooler because now, like, hey, your car is running. It's running hot like mm -hmm. you're you're making some runs like you're you're going to high rpm shifting through gears your timing's a little more aggressive now you got to start worrying about knock you got to start worrying about if your car is going to be reliable if it's not going to blow up if it's actually dialed in 600 horsepower people think like oh it's just a number no man that's a territory that not a lot of people can touch mm -hmm. they're limited to it and like when you get to that, again, you gotta know how to work on your car, man. Mm -hmm. Unless you just got money to throw out a mechanic or whatever who knows what he's doing at that. Mm -hmm. You this is dialed in territory. So, like I said, oil cooler, make sure you're not having knock. Okay. Um, this is where you actually get like your car in a dyno as well. So just getting a tune, you could go ahead and get a remote tune. Yeah. But getting that car in a dyno, actually getting like a good knock sensor from um the the roller because mm. it, it'll simulate uh, the street so much better you'll you'll be able to like actually see where your car lies and your tuner will actually be able to dial in everything mm. so much more efficiently the idle everything and uh this is where i start saying that you might have to start getting e85 okay 93 might not cut it out for you but like it will you are gonna have to push a little harder with other components of the car mm. which you might not want to do okay and uh aside from just power adders and efficiency stuff like i'm surprised we didn't jump on this topic but people think they could just throw whatever the like the, i don't know if i could curse on here but they could throw <laughs> whatever the hell they want yeah they could throw whatever the fuck they want at their car and their engine without wearing like on oem Welcome. wheels and tires uh, yes yes 225 oh, 55 r17 yeah on run flats <laughs> Are you like you must not care? Like, oh man, like moment of silence here for some of the people who race their Q fifties, uh, uh, just even just OEM everything. Like, <laughs> not like, not, dude, so to, it's but it's a dangerous jump, to jump, game, man. Cars to are jump, not something to mess with. So yeah, traction. But, but to jump back on it, right? So do we stick with the four fifty wall barrel pump for eighty five, or should we go to a twin yeah. setup? Because there's some people who might run twin <laughs> setups. Some people do, and it's really efficient because the way that the it, – it's not even efficient just for the power, um, but just the fuel tank, the way that's made. You know that the fuel tank, like, slopes over the drive shaft, so you start to have fuel on one side, and it's kind of empty on one side, and then you go mm -hmm. to turn, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden your power Slush. cuts out. So what's really nice about the twin fuel setup, and what I start seeing people do is what's really cool is they'll start laying, like, these sponges at the bottom of their fuel tank 
and then they'll run lines to their sending unit. Mm. So now no matter where the fuel is in the tank, the sponge will absorb whatever is at the bottom and will still have some sort of reserve in there. Mm. So they're not worried about their car. And it's dangerous. You, you're at, I mean, for, I don't know about, you know, three O's, but three sevens, <laughs> you're at 7,800 RPM and you go lean. Oh, that's it. Star that's it, boy. That's starvation Game right over. there. <laughs> Your pressure over. drop. That's it. So, yeah, twin setups. Um, if you're doing like uh, closed circuit, dri um, di even drifting or you, uh, drag racing too, man. Like, because I know a lot of people when they drag race, they're running on less than three gallons. Mm. You know, so that slosh can happen really yeah, quick. When, why, when they launch it, it pushes to the back. Of yeah, the exactly. And all of a sudden, it's gone. So that twin setup's really good. But even the the four the four fifty from Walboro, like I don't really think you have to go higher than that. Like those four fifty pumps are. I think they can. I think the real rating for them is like four eighty L. What is it LHP or LP? LHP. It's yeah, LHP. Oh, LH or L or something. PH, something like yeah, that. Yeah, but. For those of you, it's basically the amount of fuel that it could push out per. Um, I assume per minute. Yeah, it's like per minute or, <laughs> or hour. I don't know. <laughs> but it's it, it's a really good fuel pump for a hundred. I mean, uh, or I know what a lot of people do is, and a lot of fuel pumps. What's cool is they're like universal. You just kind of have to modify the hat sometimes. Which yes, I see. You guys that. are getting into the fuel pump at all, and you you wonder what a hat is? Just go ahead and like. Just try and get right to your there. fuel pump. You'll find the hat. Trust me. Right there. <laughs> yeah, there's there's stuff you could do to modify it to make stuff fit because sometimes the pump is a little big. But I know a lot of people run the Hellcat fuel pumps. That's it. That's another thing just too. Fine. Yeah. They, All right. So the point is like what a lot of people don't get is like the concept is it's just a pump. It's just a pump for fuel. A lot of people complicate it with like you know oh it has to do this or it has to fit this or oh it's from the hellcat How so, do, so do you think we would have to stay okay so we did the 450 fuel pump we still have mm -hmm. the cgm return line do we stay with the 10 is the 1050s or the 1080s or do we go up to 1300s so if you're yeah what are they 1250s or i think it's 12 or 1300 yeah, i think they're 1250 like so z1 just dropped some 1250s i think right like they mm -hmm. just dropped some plug-in pl oh that's what i forgot to say too go ahead so uh, the 1050s from injector dynamics, uh, a lot of people think that they could just get the fuel injectors, pop them in, and then take the OEM harness and plug them into the fuel injectors. Uh, what's cool about Top Guns, they have it right there on the what I call the build list because that's mm -hmm. what I send people to when they ask. It's They have a plug-and-play system. So you go ahead, you plug the adapter into the fuel injector. Ah, so they sell, they send you pigtails or adapter Dude, pigtails. Yeah, ad adapter pigtails, and it's it's perfect it's just a plug and play system so same thing that's something that people have to look out for when upgrading your fuel system and stuff is like oh, there's not really too many other accessory parts other than that like mm -hmm. they'll provide you with the fuel pressure regulator and the fuel filter and everything like that if you decide mm -hmm. to build like lines and stuff okay but yeah so z1 just dropped i think 1250s and they're plug-in like you don't need no adapters nah, nothing like that just so plugs right into the that's harness. really nice that's cool um i wouldn't go higher than 1250s if you want to 1300s there's nothing bad about as far as like fuel injectors and fuel pumps mm. like unless you're like starving the fuel pump because you're not giving it enough fuel to fill up yeah they're the, the bigger the better when it comes to those things so because you want more efficient you want that extra space because you don't want to put that much load on your or duty it the duty cycle you don't want yeah to duty cycle yeah you yeah. want to keep the duty cycle pretty low so yeah. would you say now that we got a 600 wheel 3.7 q50 on the 85 now the question that people probably would asking is is it reliable can this something that you can ramp on every day or do i have to baby it what in your honest opinion what do you think so like what is what is reliable to you, you taking know, like, taking tie bomb i mean you know it depends on what it is so I, as far as like blowing up your motor, not at all. Like okay. not at all. Like these VQs are really good with how like they handle the boost. But the, the issue is, is when people don't take care of their stuff, they're not like either changing their oil or they're not changing the fuel filter. They're not like, they're not going and getting tunes every like eight months to a year or so, or they're just beating on the car, not worrying about the temps or anything. Like just... Mm. Acting like uh, no mechanical sympathy whatsoever. 
Mm. You know, like I've had issues like uh, my axle broke or like that uh, was a whole nother issue. The belt yeah. slip issue, which I figured out with the anti slip kit, and just other than that, like, yeah. It's I been, mean, I have, been good. Yeah, I've just, yeah, I've just been trying to make more power efficiently. That's really it. Like I've had no engine oil temp issues, nothing like that. So it's uh You're yeah, right like, you're right it, around the threshold. Do you think you're right around the threshold of like lifting the head or no? I'm talking about 3.0Ts. I'm talking about like custom turbo kits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they're not too accessible. Working like well. they're, they're try working on a turbo. Like Okay. Goodbye. You hear me I mean, too well or not? No, I can't really hear you right now. Ah, no, I can hear messing you. up still. I'm sorry. Um, what I was saying is, but yeah, like, so you don't got to worry about the it's like the supercharger. You just got to change the oil on. Like, as long as you're good with maintenance, like it's mm-hmm. it's pretty well. Like, mm-hmm. the only thing that I have to say is what a lot of people run into is with 600 horsepower, which I think we have to touch on is like this Go god awful transmission. <laughs> okay. God-awful. Now I don't have an issue with my transmission. I don't know um, if a lot of people know that I have a completely stock transmission, completely stock engine, all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, people think I have a fast and tension flex plate. My transmission is flash tuned, so you could actually get the transmission flash tuned. It just tightens up the transmission lines and makes for harder shifts and stuff. Okay. But uh, that that transmission is just not good. It's the torque, man. It's the torque. They just they slip, and it's not meant for. Like no automatic transmission unless it's like some sort of you know built up automatic. transmission. Not really yeah, meant for that kind of power, you know. So but are you looking to do the VR? Sw- are you looking to do the VR swap soon? Yeah, it's going in and out. I'm sorry. Are you looking to do the VR swap soon? Nothing. Ah, yeah. oh, come on. Ah, I, I don't know. Let me see. Let me just double check it on my end and see if my mic is working. Bear with me, everybody. My Would mic like is me? my mic is I working. Hear it all. Would you like me to continue with the transmission? Thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> um, um, I think your your mic might be messed up because my mic is picking up good on my end. Um, let me see. Uh, see if you could take the headphones out. Um, bear with me. Yeah, continue. Thumbs up. Just thumbs up. Thumbs up on the transmission. All right, yeah, we going yeah. into it. So I think his headphones are a little. So bit yeah, up. trash transmission 3.7. Beautiful Ooh. transmission 3.0 T. That is like the pinnacle of transmissions. That, mm-hmm. Yes, 100. percent We good now. What were you saying? Go ahead. Okay, what I was saying is, oh, are you looking to do a VR swap in the future? So, um, <laughs> I wonder if yeah, this is where like I bring. So I've been contemplating right this transmission thing for a while and uh i dude i was back when the vr swap was even a thing like mm-hmm. i was thinking about doing level 10 and like god knows the road i would have went down with that level 10 transmission i know yeah. people who were having nightmares Probably. not to not to not to trash on the company like i bet they make great parts they're just not like they're not working like just to say that so but Someone, uh, I think it was Al, uh, it, you know, Infinity Brothers. It was he has Infinity a, Brothers. He does the Chris Finities. Yeah. Al, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, it was Infinity Brothers. He did the swap. Yeah, Infinity. So, yeah, he did the swap. That was one of the first ones I've seen. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like the answer to the level 10 because it's level 10 transmission just kept breaking all mm-hmm. the time. So he did the VR30 uh, transmission swap. He had a, not an air to air, but he had a boosted. 3.7 as well. It was making a little 550 wheel horsepower tuned by admin tuning. Shout out to them. Um, th- dude, he was ripping, like shifting through gears like that. He, I don't know if he had a fast intention flex plate or nothing, but no slip, no nothing. It shifted mm-hmm. faster. Mm-hmm. And when he took down everything, I guess no one really took off the transmission from the VR and really mm-hmm. like inspected it and put mm-hmm. it out on social media. But everything's just three times bigger yes the torque converter the transmission itself it's just like a quarter inch thicker everywhere Mm -hmm. that's what she said but it's (laughs) it makes for a beefier transmission it doesn't break i guess that was just the answer to make it bigger and when you look at the vq transmission you're like what the hell like it's so small and dainty and it breaks and like the torque converter goes to shit you get uh clutch material everywhere it's just 
yeah, the three point oh T transmission was the answer, and then the drive shafts fit up just fine. Or you could go yeah. ahead and get yourself a custom table. So, it's the perfect time. So would you say? I don't know if you hear me too well. Um, so would you say? I, you. I really, I really hope the video, the audio comes out pretty good. But would you say that the VR trans is just pretty much the cheaper built trans? Did you say cheaper trans? Yeah, With I don't the, know if you hear me the, too the, well. Yeah, it's, the three point oh T transmission is cheaper. Just, it's just cheaper than going with a level 10 up here. Well, dude, it's five. Oh, then level 10? Wow, that's not even a question, man. That's a good. I'm just saying, get, for supercharged yeah, guys. You can get, for supercharged guys who are trying to keep automatic. Now, this is where I have to answer the question on whether or not I'm trying to swap it. But the automatic answer for a boosted VQ without dealing with the headache of the transmission is as you're doing your build, go ahead and take, like, if you want, take the engine out, do whatever you want, clean it up, make it nice. I know a lot of people like to do that, but mm. take the transmission out and swap it with a VR one because the level 10, not only will it take forever to build, or you got to send in your core and wait for it, then you don't have a transmission. You can pick it up from a junkyard or online or eBay for like, four hundred dollars done like i got so i bought a vr30 transmission back in the day like when i had my shop like maybe a little over eight months ago i had the fast intentions flex plate i was ready to go i'll tell you why i didn't bite the bullet on that but it was 500 bucks i drilled a slot in the side of it to put the camshaft sensor you got to put a slot in the bell housing you know where it is um because the vq one is on the opposite side near the mm -hmm. bottom so you gotta move it towards the top and uh or opposite the vr one was on the bottom so you gotta move it towards the top and um you do that you get your drive shaft you swap your tcm which is like people think that's difficult no it's just, it's like a plug you just that's yeah it. It, boop yeah you call that's it, it. A day, you throw it in there and you fill up your transmission and now you got your upgraded it's an oem upgraded transmission like what better what better it's the same exact one is bolting there's mm -hmm. it's not ripped apart and mm -hmm. with remanufactured parts from a company that you don't even know who's really building it mm -hmm. people you don't even know who's really building it this mm -hmm. transmission was built by machine it yes. was 3d rendered it had to go through multiple people and sign offs and tests and all this stuff did that transmission works for a twin turbo factory vehicle that they know is going to make torque. And mm -hmm. like, I don't even think they're using that transmission anymore, which is like the interesting part. Didn't they just move to the 10 speed? Or no, uh, it's an eight speed, eight speed automatic, right? What do you mean? No, nine then, speed automatic is going to be. It's a nine. Yeah, yes, nine, nine in the automatic. new one. But yeah, so just to show that they were already knowing that this 3.0 T is going to make torque. We're in this game now to make power because they knew where they came from with the VQs. Like they never really came out with any boosted VQ or anything from factory, which like would have been beautiful. But I mean, what, like all VQs, they know like 330. Like that's mostly what people are making. Now at the factory, you could go ahead and make your 400 horsepower and then get a tune and make your 500 or make your 450 or 480 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they knew that they were going to have to build these transmissions for that specifically. And, Damn, they did well. And thank God that Nissan, job. you know, kept it bolt on like a bolt on application. They didn't need to do that. They didn't need to make. So a lot of people are asking now. Um, I want to move forward a little bit because, you know, we love the Q50 talk. I know I'm you sorry. also have. It went you hear me? Again. Okay. People are so asking I, now. I know it's not my headphones. It might be your headphones, man. <laughs> it might honestly be your headphones. Honestly. I hear you. Because I know I'm good on my end here. So. But, you know, Listen we'll try our best in the replay. I don't know what I can really do here to try to fix the audio. The audio is working good on my end. It, like, works sometimes. And then it goes out. It might be your headphones, bro. It might be your headphones. You think so? Let me unplug yeah. my headphones. It might be your headphones. See if you go on, on regular speaker and just turn the speaker a little lower. Quick. Hold on. Let's see here. Let me know. I'll just make noises. Dude, it, I am so sorry. It was my headphones. It might have been your headphones, but it it's okay. Head I gotta get new headphones. It's all good. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> Can you hear yourself? So, Is there like a background noise? 
Um, is on your end? No, it's fine. All right, cool. You're fine. So moving forward, um, now we're gonna go. We're going into overtime because we hit the one hour mark. So I do want to ask. Oh, already? Question. No, What's dude, we were talking. Now? It's okay. It's okay because we still ain't finished. So you also now you worked on a couple of the cars. If anyone's watching, let me know if there's echo on my end. No. Okay, that, that was your, that's your puppy. Um, bark. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh no! Don't worry about. It. Don't worry about. It. So you also now have a. This is it a turbocharged Z? Yeah. So aside from yeah the supercharged Q50, uh, I do have a manual turbo Z, and I stumbled. I've always wanted a 350Z, but uh, like I said, like I wanted to do something different, and it was nice to like do all that craziness and now go back down to like the car that I wanted like so oh, bad. Nice. Like it was a childhood little car that I like really wanted, and now I know like oh I can put my hands on this. Mm -hmm. I noticed it was easier to work on because there's like less electronic stuff that I had to deal with, and like the videos, man, just don't stop. There's so much information out there. So much information out there. So I was just like, you know what? Let me do this not only for like people who want to learn about Z, but like for myself. You know, this is something that I really want to do. And uh, instantly, I was just like, all right, what's some different? Like, let's like, how did you end up with that car though? For the so, people who's watching. Um, this was like, I think beginning COVID and, uh, man, just the car market just went weird. Like all of a sudden people were just selling everything they freaking had, just trying to get mm. cash. And I stumbled upon that Z for $3,900. Excuse me? Yeah. What? $3,900 for that Z. It had 142,000 miles on it. It had a brand new CD009 transmission. So the good oh. one. And uh, he just replaced it. He spent 2000 Here. Hold on one second. He spent $2,000 on the transmission. I got it for three grand. Jesus Christ. Guys, if guys are watching, he just said he basically got a, a turbocharged 350Z for under $4,000. I know he's coming no, back and everything like that. No, but no, it, that is a crackhead deal. It didn't come turbo. Oh, it didn't come turbo. No, it came. NA. So wait, so wait, 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 wait. So how did how did the turbos end up on yeah. it, brother? So <laughs> I I followed a really good friend of mine. His name was uh, That Poverty Z. If you want to look it up online, and that's <laughs> literally what it was: is a poverty 350Z that was put together and beautiful, and it was gapping everybody. And I was like, "What the hell is up with this 350Z?" And I looked. And it's a Turbonetics hood exit kit with like the worst intercooler piping I've ever seen, right? Like ah, it's yes. just, it's it's all different like material and like- Fans, silicone couplings, everything. Welded beautifully, welded beautifully. But just like the worst material and like the gold wrap, like you see the gold wrap, I didn't do that yeah. bullshit, right? So I'm looking and I'm like, wow, why is this dude beating everyone? And like, I'm looking at the cars that he's beating. And it's like these twin turbo 350Zs or they're like, you know, NA 370s that have like nitrous and stuff. And I'm like, I'm looking and it's just the simplest hood exit kit I've ever seen. It's just like turbos right where the air filter would be. Mm -hmm. the exhaust comes right out the hood. And then the intercooler piping like just runs straight from the intake manifold, like mm -hmm. across the front, down intercooler, and then like, the headers just kind of they like Y off into the exhaust. So is it a reverse Y or no? What was that? Is it a reverse Y? Yeah, so it's like the headers come down, they meet, and then they, and they Y go across, off and they come into, back to the front into the uh, bottom of the turbo, and then mm -hmm. that also Ys off into the wastegate. And then from the back of the turbo, it just goes straight to the out the hood. Mm. So it just. So what yeah. is that car running? Did what, did you do the same similar things with the Z, like the I'm fuel so pump sorry. injectors? Um, okay. Yes, I did. I did. Hold on. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Your puppy, puppy's acting up. Bear with me, guys. You know, you know. But if you guys made it to this part of the video, how much love and I really appreciate you guys. I hope you guys hit the like button while we're here. I think he just wanted to just wanted to hang out. He even looked back when he walked out. It's a, it's a boy, right? She wants to hang out, but she's just loud. Oh, so she. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. 
Yeah. But yeah, so same thing, right? Like okay. it's it's not <laughs> as simple as just like throw whatever you want to on there. It's it's all about how to make it efficient because I want a car, mm. I want the car to run forever. So yes, I did have to go out. I had to get the fuel pump. I went all OEM fuel lines because I'm not mm. running 85 on that car at the moment. I'm actually okay. running um 93. And I didn't go Walboro 450 because you gotta realize like the 37 obviously is making way more power boosted than a DE 35 yes. is. Like I think yes. I'm only making a 380, which like isn't bad for like 350Z to make 380 or 383 or 389. Like that's fine. For a for a three five to touch four hundred is a little dangerous, you know. And like unless I mean, I've seen people above it, but it's just really that torque. Once again, yeah. that just it's the demolishes like, that is, It lasts like it's going, so that's in like no problems with the engine. Great compression, no drop in oil pressure. Oil seals are fine, no leaks. So like, yeah, it's you know it's cool to have a built car, but it's even cooler to have a built car that you can drive. You know, oh, yes, runs and that especially turbo line, and you know? didn't even like, come oh, from factory turbo, yeah. Like, oh, I ain't got to worry about like this thing leaking. And what's cool is like I built it and it's efficient. And like, so yeah, you got uh, so like I was saying, it, it's a 350, it's not making as much power. You don't have to go ahead and get your Walboro, whatever. You can go and get an AEM 320, you know, some a little smaller. That's why I liked mm -hmm. about the 350 is now like. I thought that that was not user friendly. And now that I noticed like, oh, hey, I can just kind of work on these cars now. I just have to pick up a fuel pump. Oh, what kind of fuel pump do I need? Oh, I'm not making as much power. Oh, what did they got? Oh, 320. Mm -hmm. That seems, so I did some research on it. I was like, Which oh. Which injectors do you use for this car, for the DE? Um, you remember? Eight, they're like 880s or something like that. So I can't yeah. run, I can't run E85 on them. Hey. Yeah, you can run through. Go ahead. My girlfriend just got in. All right. Hello. <laughs> hey. Up just came in. Yeah, she knows mm -hmm. who you are. <laughs> hey, Dylan. So, Bella. Yeah, so um, I'm not running 1050s, which you can run the 1050s on the 350Z, but I'm not But that's it. overkill. That's way overkill. Yeah, way overkill. Okay. Um. No, honestly, I think I'm running 600s. I, I think I'm trying to get to 880s, so that way I can run. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, no, I had it wrong. So, yeah, you mm. can run 600s. I run 880s, which is a little overkill. But I okay. wouldn't recommend running E85 on the 880s. Like, the 1050s, the uh, Injector Dynamics 1050s are built for, like, E. That's what, okay. that's what they want. So I would do that with, like, a little, like, a wall, um, not a war war. I think AEM makes a little bit bigger of a fuel pump. I think it's like a, okay. I forget what it is. Like a four twenty or something along those lines. But mm -hmm. my kit right now is set up for ninety three. Okay. And a lot of people don't get that when I say that, but it's just as simple as like yeah, you don't want to you don't want to make a complex line. system. Yeah, the fuel injectors, the fuel lines, and the fuel pump is just not it. everything it works the fuel lines will erode uh the fuel pump won't be able to push out as much power as i would want like you got to pump more e85 out it burns mm -hmm. more burns faster and the same thing with the injectors i gotta put more exactly e85 I agree. so like it's just all like compensation for what you're doing she just broke so, the and that was actually kind of funny <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. gonna, i'm just gonna let her run but uh, yeah. So it's not even just that. Man. And she about to close the closed the door too. That was crazy. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That was funny. Turbo cars, okay. With uh, so with superchargers, right? Mm -hmm. I go. I have a ninety-three. I go and I decide, hey, I want E eighty-five. Well, I can just on the supercharged car just run that E eighty-five, like on the queue, just swap out my fuel system, whatever I need to do. Mm. Now, on the turbo hood exit car, I have to be careful because mm. if I just add E85 to this turbo boosted, like it's going to run the torque through the roof. Roof. The supercharger won't do that. Like the supercharger is not going to give you all that torque. It'll give you way more power, but it's not yeah. going to give you, it just can't, it physically won't be able to. Unlike mm. the turbo to where you put E85 and that, it, ooh, in the fuel injectors you blow that and up and it. it gets into the exhaust manifold mm -hmm. done instant so you now you got to worry about 
okay, we'll kind of compress. Now you don't have to switch out your turbo, but now you need a different exhaust diameter because mm. now you got to lower your torque numbers. And like, now you got to know someone who welds. And now that's where it got into like, oh, now I understand like some builds are like user friendly. And like some builds aren't. Some builds you need help or you need knowledge or you need, and it's custom builds. So like mm. as custom as the three seven is, it's not. They give you the kit. It's a bolt on kit. Like it, yeah. it legitimately is a bolt. You know, kit. super charge and turbo is completely different. Thing. There's nothing that you have to do. You get rid of stuff. You add stuff on. Where mm. the turbo kit is like, if I if I bust a wastegate weld, I, I can't just go buy another one. Like it's all yeah. custom welded. It's not, yes. it's not an out the box kit. It is that's what I was saying. That poverty Z. It is a I think it's seven hundred dollar or even cheaper than that. Maybe five a five hundred dollar or six hundred dollar whatever turbonetics turbo. It's not even a ball bearing turbo. Mm. It still has it uses like a regular input shaft, and um, it just this completely just all from what we grabbed over the shop intercooler piping. Mm. and the intercooler make it happen and that's it and it works it works that's all we wanted to do the oil feed we got a gretty extended oil pin just to add a little more oil and mm -hmm. uh to, for the oil feed for the turbo and we didn't drill into the block nothing like that yeah we took the oil pressure sensor off we put tapped it from there yeah so the rb25 t so the R nismo rb25 the mm -hmm. oil tee from that is uh, steel, so it's not going to break. It won't leak, but you got to be careful because you can mess up the threads because obviously the DE is cast. Yeah, so yeah. Cross we put the thread on there. Yeah, we put some Teflon uh, seal on there and ran the oil fill and ran the uh, oil pressure sensor. We didn't drill into a block. We just added something on there, like just made it work. And mm -hmm. that's where I started to notice like – you know, it's just the concept of how these things are built on how you get them to work. You need, you know, like, oh, why do you make too much torque? Well, because velocity, you know, that. so you got to make a bigger exhaust so that way you have less velocity and less pressure in the exhaust system so that way you can run E85. And, like, mm -hmm. you know that. So, like, you learn as you go, and then you realize you need more tools, more knowledge as you get into these custom things, and now – now you're here. Now you're yeah, deep now you're here, it. you know? So now, like, I have, like, this appreciation for, like, a lot of people who build custom shit because mm -hmm. I know that they've put a lot of time and research and knowledge because you can't just put stuff. Like, you can tell the difference between just putting stuff together and someone who's built their car. Yes, it's the just the quality, different. fit and finish. And the quality in the build, too. So now it's you expressing yourself and, like, mm -hmm. it's just uh, down the rabbit hole of what cars mean to people and, like, what their mm -hmm. time is to their car. I completely agree. Such so, a beautiful thing, man. So, yeah, the, the hood exit Turbo Z, that's, that's me, dude. Like, that's right that's there. That's definitely if, you. If I need you to express want anything more, it's a uh, turbo hood exit 350Z on three-piece wheels. Like, that's perfect. All right, so I'm let's move it. forward. Let's mm -hmm. go. Let's finish it off with the last car. Let's the 240. It. Now, no one really knows too much about the 240, but when you got it and you start drifting it, you're doing what I always wanted to do, man. Like, you have a supercharged Q, you got a turbo 350, and then you got a car you're going to slide with. So what is what are you going to do with the 240? What what is that going to be the channel car? Like what is it? Like I just really want to know because at this point I don't know who's going to be really holding down it down. It's it's hard, right? Because like you know, there's a lot of people who love 240s. There's a lot of 240 content out there, and there's you know a lot of people. Who, if you look at my channel, you just, it's all my Q50 is getting me my content. You know, that's all yeah. my videos. So like that is right there like me proving almost to myself that i'm doing this for me mm. you know as much as i love the fans and as much as i love the engagement like i love 240s that's what the mm. japanese car culture is what got me onto cars because it's a culture and like 
not that the 240 started that, but it is like the little engine that could, man. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's such an iconic platform that I wanted to be a part of for myself. And I just mm. love the style. It re- it just it really sits with me. And like, it's something that I don't know. Like, I'm struggling with it, honestly. Like, mm. the harness having to build the whole entire thing from the ground up. You know, I crashed it, and like, mm. so. And the thing is, too, it's underpowered. So, like, trying to drift it makes it more difficult because now I have to actually drive the car. You know, it's not What's like a I can KA. 20 or something a 24 de yeah 24 d yeah yeah so 30 years ago it made 174 horsepower i think Ah, reminds me of my max right now we're like pushing 90 it's the highest mile per hour is 75 on the tachometer like i'm not looking to race this thing you know i'm looking (laughs) to have this thing because i want it and because i know it's like i don't know it's like the little student drifter in me like i that is the car. Now, 350Zs, Adam LZ already proved that. 350Zs are the superior drift platform because mm. not only that they're – it's not the driving, okay? It's not the way mm. that the car feels because the superior chassis to drive is an S chassis because of how mm. this, how it flicks. But mm. these, it doesn't matter whether you touch someone's door, bust a wheel, break an engine, do whatever, whatever. Mm everything's replaceable Mm. like that like parts are at auto zone that you can get like that you can it it doesn't matter you could get a chassis for a thousand dollars you could get a rolling chassis chassis a thousand dollars yeah you bust the fender you need to cut something out weld something back together you can find it it. there's a chassis thousand dollars you don't need to like 240 is a little different, you know, 240 stuff's like it's scarce and expensive and stuff, but mm-hmm. like, it is, the, aside from that, it's an underpowered car that's, the weight distribution is like basically 50-50, it's completely mm-hmm. light, it has a welded diff, it has a four speed, has mm-hmm. an angle kit, and you got to drive the damn thing if you want to drift because the power is not there for you. Ah, the power is not. Will actually, will catch traction so whenever it wants. So, three fifty Zs have a little more power. So yeah. that's why I call them the superior drift car for novice like drifters because mm-hmm. you can save yourself. You could do a little more. You don't have to upgrade anything. No turbos. You ain't got to worry about that. With two forties, like if you want to drift, you better want to do it because you got to work it. You, it's have you have you movie. considered um doing a uh I hate to say it like this but a, a eBay turbo kit build on the K the KA yeah. like that's like a what is it a T twenty eight or T twenty four like hard. those really small yeah. turbo that's what I'm doing man listen these KAs I'm not looking to make no crazy graphics. yeah yeah I'm not saying you're trying yeah. to make crazy power but with a small turbo at least you know you can get on the fifty yeah. sixty horse top bomb and, like, and then you can slide it a lot on. I know the room that I need is there's so much clearance for it. There's so mm. much research out there and like that's yeah, that's that's something that like I can make literally my own turbo kit for the car. And like yes. that's gonna be that's a- now now like like, I don't even look at the 240 no more as, like, this, like, yes, it's a 240, whatever, like, the, the connection mm. that I have with the culture, but more of, like, this is my go-kart chassis, mm. you know? And, like, what it, this is the go-kart chassis that I used to drift. And mm. I, this is, if I had to pick a go-kart chassis body style, this would be it. Mm. You know? So now I'm like, okay, well, let me make whatever I need to do what I need to do with it. So now it's literally this drift platform that looks like the thing that I want it to look like. You always want it to look like. Yeah, mm. so it, like, it really works out. And like, regardless of whether people watch it, whatever, like I'm learning, you know, mm-hmm. like that's all a part of it, man. Like it, it's it's a part of the game, especially with YouTube, man. And you know the deal, like. Yeah. You, you gotta love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You gotta love. What you're doing. You gotta love the interactions with people. You gotta love like the kind of content that you're creating. And like, driving is something that I really want to do. Mm-hmm. Nissan is something that I really love because it's it's where I started. That's where I grew up with. That's what I know. You know, like I don't need no Lambo to 
get the viewers that I want to get. I don't need a GTR, even though I would love one to get the yeah, viewers. Yeah, me too. I would love one. <laughs> I, I can make do with what I got and have fun while doing it and learn from my mistakes. And, you know, maybe that's that's where you need to start. Maybe that's how you that's, good. That, that's how people get the appreciation. That's how people I I don't think there's no ways to appreciate life other than through hard work. That you know, people like, are important, man. Relationships yeah, are important. Slaving is one thing, but as long as you're doing it for something that you love, you have a goal in mind. Like, man, I'll tell you right now, I hate wrenching. I hate that. I hate that. Oh, sound. I hate busting and, my knuckles. Yeah, but just knowing, like, every single turn, I'm going towards something that I want. Yes. Like, I'm making it happen. I'm doing it with my own bare hands, and like, yes. I'm like, I gotta. And I got to make sure and be responsible for everything. everything. No one else is, who's going to fix my car? Unless I got money like that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Fix my car. And like, yeah. no, man, this is mine. You know, I got to mm-hmm. be responsible for it. Unless I'm just wanting it to be a money pit. Then you're a slave to your car. Like, yes, that's a different thing. Doing it yourself and saying that this is mine. And like, you know, if it breaks, that's my mess up. And it, it, it's taught me accountability. It's mm-hmm. taught me responsibility. It's taught me financial responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's taught me how to budget. It's taught me how to just take care of my things, how to keep things clean and like organizing and mm-hmm. double checking. And just like all of that adds up because if you just miss one or two of those things and all of a sudden you miss two or three of those things and then all of a sudden or you, you miss a, miss a bolt, bolt. leave a <laughs> bolt left over. <laughs> I said if you left a bolt left over and left out. Yeah, or whatever. Like, you know, it happens, but like you realize, like, okay, now I gotta write stuff down. Now I gotta make this. Now I gotta like keep it in my head that I have to be more organized because your build shows you that's who you are. Your build's dirty, cut up, and put together. Well, you're that's a dirty the type cut of person up, that you are. Person, you know what I'm saying? Like you got a clean build that you built, you put together, like, man, I love nice garage built cars and stuff, man. They're beautiful. Mm-hmm. But it's more than anything, like, people who have passion in what they do, they have goals and they're willing to put their hands and get active with whatever it is that they're doing to make their goals come true. And whether that be through cars, through music, through driving, mm-hmm. through YouTube, whatever, like, Man, like one thing that I have to say to like anyone who's actually watching this, man, like if if you've made it to the end and you want to do something with your car or you want to like just show people like what you're doing or you just want to make something like wh- whatever it is, create and man, share it with people, man. Mm. Share it with people and just do it. Have a goal. Like make sure it makes you happy and share it with people I because agree. that's what that's what it's all about. Like. There is no you're gonna have the fastest car. There is no you're gonna have this. There is no there is no set goal. It is you are made up of the relationships that you make with people, the interactions uh-huh. that you have. So if you're gonna do something and you wanna have interactions, good interactions, do something you love, take pride in it, ask questions, share with people. Share with people yeah. what you're doing, man. And like that's what I've learned with like thank God that you're still out there, man, because like you're pumping out content and like i'm you trying me that big time man like dude you're wearing my shirt man like yeah i'm I, I wearing your shirt because you support me man like, like you support you know, me man i got all the love for you brother so it's it's just and i got to this point being able to be on your podcast being able to like talk about my car who the hell cares about my car it it's my matter. car and I'm here talking to someone in New York about my car, my different cars and what I've done, the time I've spent. That's such a beautiful <laughs> thing just because I decided to share what I wanted, what I chose exactly. for people. And like it, it keeps me humble. It keeps me honest with myself. It keeps me knowing who I am. And like I say this all the time, man, if like you are not defined – by what you're good at but you know who are you if you don't do what you, like if, if you're not like what it's I'm okay to, i know <laughs> i feel it i yeah, feel it i feel to, it coming <laughs> you know she the, said the, the, anyway. don't, who cares what you're interested in 
you know, be interested and share with people because I'm guaranteed there's more people who are like interested just as much as you are. And it, building that community is everything. The, like mm. and more than anything at this time right now, like we need community, man. Yeah. We need people to come together. Like I, li the reason why I love starting heat in the comment section is because it gets people talking. Riled up. Yeah. 3.7, 3.0. 3.0 T. And then yeah. I come in and I'm like, yeah, they're both good. It's like, hey, well, no, well, I guess, yeah, we all have Nissan. Sure, yeah. This cool. It's yeah. a community. We all have the same looking car. Like, it's, yes. it's, it's just funny how, like, how much connection people can have through just something just cars like, oh, and people you know? start businesses over cars yeah, man it, it's so cool man whether it be motorcycles cars baseball cards whatever man it is just cool the the, the community and the impact that you can make just sharing the, the things that you do with what you love and i'm not i'm not looking to get rich off youtube or whatever yeah although it would be great to do this every single day of my life and not have to worry about anything else and like just kind of build my cars and whatever what i will uh, say i would jump in and saying with that is it depends on the type of youtuber you are because i'm telling you even though i may have more subscribers man it is stressful you try yeah. to look for content you try to make content that yeah. people would actually want to watch and you look at all the bigger dudes and you're like they're doing so good but what i realize is this is this is me just giving my own commentary before i, I shut down and everything like that um Honestly, you can't compare everybody, man. We can't compare ourselves to someone with 100,000, 2 million in an automotive channel. It's just not the same. Their revenue stream is just differently. I, the way your production I quality is. I me all the time for trying to compare myself to someone yeah. like fucking Adam LZ. And she's like, it's Adam. Like, look at the compound yes. this dude built. Like, he yes. It's you don't know what like I'm only 21. I don't know. Yes. I just started this two years ago. Years I ago. have no idea. Mm -hmm. And if I stopped when I thought it was gonna get hard, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Get exactly. Too. Exactly. Don't compare it. Their, their revenue stream is different, man. Different. And the thing Everyone is, is different, man. When I do compare it, because I'm gonna tap out with you soon, a couple more minutes. Go ahead. No, that's fine, man. I, I, I don't feel me well. But, half that you gave me, dog. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I really appreciate it. Well, I just want you to keep moving forward with it. Don't give up on it. Cause the thing is, you have cars that people are building right now at 18, at 17, at 21. And they haven't found you yet. They just haven't found you. And I really hope that this platform that I'm bringing out there would actually just say, listen, you know, Boost puts out some good information, but Double R, man, yo, I really like his content. And I think that's what's really important. Sometimes it just, it takes an algorithm for it to pop up or take a person like me. And that's why I want to just Thank create you, something like this. So people like me that have cars that want to help people can make connections and make network yeah because like I, listen i don't know what i'm gonna do in the future or whatever but it's just it's really nice to like just share again share with people the things that i love to do i make great connections like you know who knows where life can take some of the people that you meet on youtube you know and like mm -hmm. for some people you know who don't have like whether you live in a rural area or you didn't talk to much people or didn't have many friends, like YouTube is a great place to find community with the similar like-minded people who are interested in the things that you like to do, you know? And like, as long as you continue that because you love to do it, I don't see no harm in it, man. Like it's every, I think everyone should document what they do, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, like, mm -hmm create something and share it with the world man there's no problem with that man there's absolutely no problem with that if like if i could take if anyone could leave with like a two cents it's that man just like create something whether it be like meaningful to you or someone else mm -hmm. or whatever and just share it because there's a know, niche for it it'll yeah well it'll provide like whether it be that thing that provides value or the connection that you make to where now you could provide value for whatever else that brought you. Like it's, it's the initiative. What else are you going to do? Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do other than share the thing that you love to do? Tell me what the, like, what else is there to do? Exactly. Like, what you have sharing for people who are going down the line, just like you to compare it the most peak, peak, peak of 
like people in this age at the moment, someone like Elon Musk, like all he's doing is sharing the thing that he loves to do. The most. And making money off of it. The absolute most. He doesn't do things he doesn't want to do. Why would you? Exactly. Why would you? It makes no sense. Do do things you want to do. Take the uh, steps necessary to get to where you want to be. Like, man, like one of just the, you know, the hardest things that you just continuously learn over time is discipline, consistency. And, you know, it all comes together when when you love what you do. It's second nature, second to none. Yes. I wake up in the morning because this is what I want to do. You know? Exactly. So on that goes, we're going to start closing it out. Oh, yeah. Um wow, this Thank was live. You. This was like my first live stream of 2021 and the new uh bring the boo series um oh, yeah. with my guest uh, double R. So I'm gonna put his links below to his YouTube channel and his IG. I really hope that you guys go tap in. And the funny thing is, a couple of people that I have recommended to you in the past do subscribe to your channel too. So I've seen them in your comment sections. That's I'm great. like, that's pretty dope. That people are going there showing you love and Absolutely. checking out your content because it's good content. I know it isn't frequent as enough as enough, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I understand. Yeah. You know, yeah. we all got our daily lives and everything like yeah. that. You know, so really anything you want to close everybody on and you know drop your social medias and everything or um, yeah, you can definitely follow me at double dot rr on YouTube and Instagram to where I'm making content with the supercharged Q50. I'm making content with the hood exit 350Z. I got the 240 platform that I'm learning how to drift on. And I'm trying to do other things uh, with all those platforms. Trying to switch it up, making it exciting for you guys. A, a lot of people really aren't doing that. I would love to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I could leave anything for you, man, please continue to do this. Like, if it ever goes to a point to where you can't find someone to talk to, whatever the case may be, I'm a phone call away, man. Like, this is great. I love this. Like, not even just for my own exposure. I hope this grows for you because this kind of transaction that we're having right here with mm -hmm. information that we can just people can just pick apart and listen to they don't have to be too invested into it and yet mm -hmm. we're helping people right here this we're mm -hmm. giving value and we're just shooting the shit yeah, like so we cool. haven't even gone sure. into the wheels or tires or whatever like racing versus drifting driver whatever like j just the fact that we can get on here talk for an hour and 31 minutes and the amount of information that we just flooded into people's ears, you mm -hmm. can't get that anywhere else. You can't get yes. that anywhere else. Yes. So, or you have to scout through forums <laughs> and memes. Yeah, man, yeah, and like this is relevant information too, you know? We can say what's been wrong in forums. We can say like, hey, like, you know, the water to air still in kit isn't the best. The air to air, and this is why, because it's more efficient. Water gets hot. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. You know, just stuff like that. And like, Z forums are kind of dead now. You know, you haven't seen anything posted in them since like 2012. So it's nice to exactly. see people who are relevant and like talking about this information for people who want to continue to do these cars, man. Like, again, there's yeah. always 18 year olds building their cars. They need the information. I needed the information. Yeah. And thank God there was people out there like you who would give me information. If it weren't for people like you, enthusiast POV, speed cultures, where the hell would uh, like I? Uh, who else is in the Nissan Infinity community? Yeah, yeah. Well, who would be holding it down? You're right. Yeah, who's holding it down right now? Yeah. Well, we're to, those big well you're also people. part of the community too. Thank you. That's it. Thank you I, I'm gonna I'm yeah. make this statement. I'm gonna tap out. I don't want to cut you short, but I take this as a uh, as a pizza pie, and we Hell can yeah. all have a slice. That's how I take it. Hell yeah, for sure. All right. So this is all side that, guys. I appreciate you for having me. This on, is right? Double R. You guys know what to do. Tap in with him below. So right I'm of that. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Thank you, guys. This is the first session of the new year. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel.